That's right, here in Norfolk, Texas. That's right, you're Norfolk, Texas. That's right, you're Norfolk, Texas. Texas won't shoot anywhere. That's right. Everybody. This is part number nine of my 2011 college football Big 12 preview and yes we're going to talk about those Texas Longhorns. One season you're playing for the national championship. The next season you don't even qualify for a bowl game. It was no question like night and day for the boys from Austin going from 13 and 1 to 5 and 7. And there is no question that Matt Brown did not take this very lightly. He did not say well 5 and 7 I mean, it's no big deal. We'll just pick up from where we left off next season. No need to make changes. No, Matt Brown didn't do that at all, ladies and gentlemen. Um, how about five new assistant coaches and, and also a new um, strength and conditioning coach as well? Among those changes will include a new offensive coordinator, in fact, co-offensive coordinators, uh, Major Applewhite, and you have Brian Harson from Boise State, the guy that was responsible for those trick play calls in that one bowl game, the Fiesta Bowl, a few years ago when the uh, Broncos beat Oklahoma. Um, Harson, um, he'll be the play caller for the, the uh, Longhorns. And then defensively, Manny Diaz takes over the defensive reins um, because of Will Muschamp leaving Texas to be the head coach of Florida. Let's go ahead and talk about the offense uh, first, though. And key number one, I think, to this team is going to be the quarterback. And notice that I didn't put Garrett Gilbert's name right there. Now, Gilbert, don't get me wrong, will get consideration because he is the incumbent. But he did throw more interceptions last year than touchdowns. In fact, it wasn't even close. Um, I do have, you know, a, a good number of Texas Longhorn subscribers um, on this very channel. And I would really love their input on two things. One, who they think um, either should be or will be uh, the starting quarterback this year for the Longhorns. And uh, number two is Connor Wood transferring. Um... There's, you know, rumors about that. I don't know how much validity there is to them. But uh, naturally, uh, that would make the quarterback race even more interesting if you have one of the four guys, I did say four guys, battling for that spot, what that will do. Um, a few days ago on the Sports Animal Station um, in Oklahoma City, they actually were interviewing Craig Way. And people, you know, in Longhorn Land know who he is, the radio play-by-play -play guy for the Longhorns. And he was saying that he doesn't ever remember um, a battle for quarterback being this wide open between this many guys. We mentioned Connor Wood. We also um, have to talk about David Ash, the true freshman, and Case McCoy, um, you know, Colt's brother, who's going to get consideration, and then, of course, uh, the returning quarterback in Garrett Gilbert. And remember, this is a, a Texas team that in years past under Matt Brown has had quarterback battles, but they were two-way battles. Early 2000s, um, Chris Sims beating up Major Applewhite, and, of course, you probably heard complaints about that. And then 2006, um, the battle that you had between Jevin Sneed and Colt McCoy. McCoy winning the battle, and of course, McCoy eventually becoming the winningest quarterback um, in the history of college football. But this battle is between four guys, between Ash, between Wood, um, between McCoy, and also between Gilbert. This is going to be uh, something where we probably won't know who the starting quarterback will be until late August. So um, that's pretty important, and they'll be going... Um, under center in an offense that uh, Matt Brown has already said is going to be uh, physical, in your face, be very aggressive. Um, that will mean, um, key number two, the offensive line must do its part. Um, Brown wants this offense to be kind of like that offense that we saw in the late 90s under Texas where you had a physical bruising running back, um, Ricky Williams, who, of course, won the Heisman. Well, if the offensive line can, you know, do their part, can move those defenders back, something that they did not do a good job last season of, then that will allow a guy like Malcolm Brown um, to be everything Texas wants him to be. And Brown, very highly touted running back out of high school last year. Um, they think he's going to be the, the best running back that Texas has had since Jamal Charles from 2005. They think that highly of him. But you only return two offensive linemen, and uh, you can see right there they've got to replace the uh, tackles and you have to replace one guard. So it's going to be a challenge for this offensive line, and we'll see how Texas does under the new offense of uh, Brian Harson.
Okay, now time to talk about the receivers for the Longhorns, and I have mixed reviews because on one hand, um, they lose um, a couple of good ones, and their leading receiver, James Kirkendall, and also Marquise Goodwin, who has decided to put um, football on hold this year to focus on uh, track and field. Uh, he's one of those um, athletes that uh, could do pretty good at the World Championships and could also qualify for the Olympics next year. So football, he's using this year as a redshirt year. Um, but you do have Mike Davis back and also uh, Malcolm Williams. Williams, I think, could be the number one guy um, in the rotation. And uh, don't be surprised if Jackson Shipley is in the mix as well. And yes, he is the uh, younger brother of uh, Jordan Shipley. Jackson, just like Jordan, had one heck of a uh, high school career. And of course, we all know what Jordan did on the collegiate level. Ask Oklahoma how good Jordan Shipley was. So his younger brother, Jackson, could be in that rotation as well for the Longhorn offense. Now defensively, the Longhorns last year, they were on the field a lot, much in part thanks to that offense not being productive. Defensively, they actually did not do um, too shabby of a job. Um, defensive line was a reason, I think, why, and um, they returned most of those players. They do lose Sam Ocho, and they uh, also lose Eddie Jones, but returning, you've got the, the ends. You've got Alex Okafor, a good one, and also a guy who plays a true freshman last year, Jackson Jeffcoat. He's back. And Keiston Randall, one heck of a nose tackle. I think I've seen him on some first-team All-Big 12 selections already. Um, I expect him to have a good year for the Horns. Lineback and core, no worries here because you have senior leadership. Um, Keenan Robinson, leading tackler, is back for the Horns. Second leading tackler, Emilio Acho, um, is back as well. And the safeties? Going to be a secure spot because Christian Scott started in 10 games last year. He returns along with a guy who seems like he's been there forever in Blake Gideon. Um, could be first team All-Big 12 uh, this season. Key number three, though, is replacing the corners because I think opposing offenses in the Big 12 who love to throw a bunch will go right after the inexperienced corners. You lose um, Curtis Brown, Chikey Brown, and second-round NFL draft pick Aaron Williams you know the quarterbacks of the opposing team are really going to be going after them. So really keep an eye on the corner position for Texas. And as far as your place kicker, um, he's back in um, form of Tucker. Um, only missed four kicks last year out of 27. 23 of 27, that's pretty good. But you have to replace the kick returner in D.J. Monroe, who actually played a little bit at running back last season. So kick returner has to be replaced. Looking at the schedule for the Longhorns, um, they play a couple of name-recognized teams before they even enter Big 12 play. New Independent BYU comes to Austin, and the following week you play at UCLA in what has to be a revenge game for the Longhorns. We'll talk about that matchup in a second. Talking about the uh, Big 12 schedule, of their four toughest games, only one of them is in Austin, um, and that's the Oklahoma State game. Play at Mizzou, and you play at A&M. The A&M game, by the way, Thanksgiving week. And then the Red River shootout with the Sooners in Dallas. At least you get Texas Tech at home. Now, one of my um, Longhorn subscribers, uh, Johnny Reb, a couple weeks ago predicted that uh, Texas this season would be something like 8-4. and four, And pretty much I agree with him. While I don't think um, Texas is going to win the Big 12 uh, this particular season, they're playing against a lot of terrific offenses and there would have to be major improvement, and plus the quarterback situation would have to be secure and the biggest improvement for this team for Texas to reach the upper echelon, uh, the top of the Big 12 ladder. So I think it's an awful lot to ask for Texas to go from 5-7 and seven to an 11-1 and one this upcoming year. But I do think there'll be improvement. I've got them going 8-4 and four and actually finishing 5th uh, in the league. But I think a realistic goal for Texas, win at least 9. Um, you get 9-3, and three, I think that would give you Cotton Bowl consideration. And Jerry Jones and Arlington would really, really love to have Texas play in the Cotton Bowl because of the amount of tickets you would be able to sell in that game. And that stadium would be probably three-quarters or four-fifths full of burnt orange for Texas. So win at least 9 games, that's probably a third, maybe a fourth-place finish in the league, I think 2012, with as much talent as they have back and with the familiarity that they'll have under Brian Harson's offense, I think 2012 will be the year that Texas is contending again for the Big 12 championship. If you look at a game to talk about, it's UCLA because this was the game that last season was the first of seven defeats for the Longhorns and it exploited Texas somewhat as far as not being able to contain the run. 
So if you can win this game, you can enter Big 12 play with a lot of confidence, assuming also that you can um, survive BYU at home in mid-September. You can enter 3-0, then right there you've got the confidence that you need, something that you probably didn't have a whole lot of for last season. So that's my look at the Texas Longhorns for 2011. Just a reminder, August 8th is when I'll begin part one of my three-part preview of the Oklahoma Sooners. August 8th, we'll talk about the offense, the 12th, the OUD, and special teams, and the 16th, we'll break down the Oklahoma schedule. That's it for now. So long.